Okay, let's consider hashing and its applications. So the goal of hashing is to be able to tell if two strings are equivalent. And we do this by assigning a number to every string. So let's say we had the string A, B, D, F, G. Okay, so we have to convert this string into a number. So first we'll convert every single character of the string into a number. So we'll do this by, so A is the first character, it becomes 1. B is the second character, it becomes 2. D becomes 4. F becomes 6. And G becomes 7. Okay, the next thing we do is we pick a base. And the base is a small number, a uh, prime number. So the smallest prime number is 2. Right, it has to be small and prime, so might as well pick 2. So now, we're going to take 2 to the power of 1 and multiply it with the first character, which is a 1. Right, because it's an A. We'll take 2 to the power of 2 and multiply it with the second character, which is a 2. Then we'll add that with 2, 2 to the power of 3 times the third power, which is a, sorry, third character, uh, which is a 4, times 2 to the power of 4 times the fourth character, which is a 6, times 2 to the power of 5 times the fifth character, which is a 7. Now note that the characters can be like in decreasing order. We could have G, A, B, right? It could be up and down. It doesn't really matter what the characters are and the order they're in. Well, the order they're in matters for the hash function, uh, but in this example, the characters are all increasing letters. They don't necessarily need to be. Okay, so this will give a string a particular value. And if we will give, we'll use the same formula to give every string a value. And if the two values are of two different strings are the same, we'll call them equivalent. Now, since this number can become really large, we'll use, take a mod, which is a big prime number. Uh, 10 to the 9 plus 7, let's just say. Another possible option for a mod is 10 to the 9 plus 9. Because they're both uh, big prime numbers. And the reason these two are good options is because uh, they're small enough such that we can multiply uh, two numbers, like these mods together, or two numbers that are modded together and it will not overflow. Uh, okay, so... We take this big sum and we take it mod the mod and we have a smaller value now. And so when we're checking if two strings are equal, if two strings have different hash functions, as in they give a different sum, uh, sum of all these things here, yeah, then they're definitely not equal. But if two strings are said to be the same, they may not be the same, right? Like let's just say we have uh, AB which will translate to 2 times 1 plus 2 squared times 2. And this equals 2 plus 8, which is 10. Now, if we just had the 10th letter, uh, J, this also equals 10. So these two strings will be said to be equivalent. Alternatively, we could have the 8th letter plus A, right? So this will give us 8 times, oh no, sorry, the 4th letter, The third letter. We have the third letter and then an A. So this will give us... Oh, and this shouldn't be the tenth letter. Sorry, it should be the fifth letter. And the fifth letter, so we have 2 times 5, which is 10. If we have CA, that will give us 2 times three, C, which is 3, plus 2 squared times A, which is 1, which also equals 10. So all these strings will be said to be equivalent, even though they're not. And there are several ways to get around this, and you can look up uh, linear probing or different collision... It's called a collision when they're said to be the same when they're not. You can look up different techniques. Uh, the one that I prefer to use best is called double hashing, where basically I just pick a second base and a second mod, and I repeat the process. And if they have the same hashes, uh, if, they have, if both the hashes are the same, then I say that they're equivalent. Um, a couple things to watch out for. T uh, double hashing works like usually for all the test data, normal test data. But in code forces, when there is hacking and stuff, you don't want to use uh, you don't want to use that because it can get easily hacked. So a solution is to have an array with say multiple possible bases and mods, and you randomly pick one each time, and that way it's harder for to hack this to hack that. Okay, so now that we got one string hashing, uh, let's get into how to do rolling hashes. So let's just say I have a string, 
A, B, C, B, D, A. And I want to get all hashes of length 3. All right, so that would be A, B, C, B, C, D, C, B, D, and B, D, A. So all hash strings of length 3. So now if I hash them all using the above formula, uh, notice that this above formula has n terms in it, or the length of the hash. Let's call length of hash m. So it has m terms in it. And so if I hash uh, each individual thing of length 3 separately, it's m times n runtime. And that's very slow. But it turns out that I can do this quicker. I can reuse what I'm doing. So let's just say I use the same base as 2 and a mod as 10 to the 9 plus 9. So I first calculate the first hash in O of M runtime. So that's 2 times 1 plus 2 squared times 2. Uh, plus 2 cubed times 3. Okay, I'm not going to calculate this. Let's just call this X. So now when we want to move from ABC to BCB, what I have to do is I have to remove the A on the end. And I have to add the B at the end, at the other end. Okay, so I can remove the A by subtracting the first term, right? And the first term is uh, the base times the first character. Um, once I subtract the first term, I have to shift the B and C to the left one spot. And what I mean by that is currently the B is with 2 to the power 2 and the C is with 2 to the power 3. Right? Uh, I want the, a to, the B to be with 2 to the power 1 times 2 and the c to be with 2 to the power 2 times 3. Okay, so I can, I can fix this by dividing by 2, by dividing by the base. So I divide by the base, and then I get this, and then I add in the last term, which is 2 to the power m, in this case, is, m, is, m is the length of the string, right? So in this case, it's 3, times b, which is 2. So now I got my new hash value. And this took o of 1 to do, right? We subtracted a term, we divided, then we added a term. It takes O of 1. And even if the length was like 20, right, it's the same thing. We subtract a term, divide, and add a term. And sorry, divide by the base specifically. Uh, the only issue is we're taking mods every step. We're taking mod 10 to 9 plus 7, or whatever the mod you choose to use. So let's just say that our mod is 10 to 9 plus 7, and we're looking at the value of 10 to 9 plus 10, right? So 10 to the 9 plus 10, and we have to divide this by 2. This should get us 10 to the 9 over 2 plus 5. Now, I'm not going to bother calculating 10 to the 9 plus 2. But if I take it 10 to the 9 plus 10 mod uh, 10 to the 9 plus 9, I'll get 1. Then when I divide that by 2, I'll get 0.5. And these two values clearly aren't equal. So the question is, how do we deal with that? And the answer is, well, we can't really divide when we're taking mods. But... We can multiply by a modulo inverse. And what this means is, let's call the top value up here x, right? So instead of doing x over 2, right now we have something like x over 2 should equal y. Now if we take x mod, uh, mod whatever the modulo is, we can multiply it by a particular value, uh, let's call it z, to get y. Uh, and this won't directly get y. Let's move this over a little. If we multiply it by z, we then take the mod again, and then we get y. Right, so our goal was so that x over 2 equals y. And let's just make this a little clearer too, because it's looking similar to the z a bit. Okay, so instead of dividing by 2, we're going to find some value that we can multiply x with, so that once we do x times z and we take the modulo, we still get the same answer y. So the question is, how do we find z? And turns out z is not relevant to x or y, right? z just has to do with the number 2 and the modulo. So we have to find a value z such that instead of dividing by 2, we can multiply it by z and take the mod and it's the equivalent of dividing by 2. So it turns out, and you can look at the proof online for this, uh, let's call 2 as our base, right? So it turns out, instead of dividing by our base, we can do 2 to the power 
of whatever the mod is minus 2 and this equals z. This is how much you have to multiply and you can look up the proof. It's not too complicated. Okay, so then the question is, how do we take 2 to the power of mod minus 2? Because this is up to 10 to the 9. And we can't just keep multiplying 2 by itself 10 to the 9 times. Um, but we can do exponents in logarithmic time. So if we're trying to take the power of... We have our base and we have our exponent, right? Okay, so the function for this is... You can do this recursively. Basically, if the exponent uh, is 1... Uh, then we return base. Actually, I guess I'll use uh, actual code instead of pseudocode to make this a little more clear. Okay. Um, otherwise, we can say, we can have like a save variable, which is the power of base to the power of exponent over 2. So we multiply half of it. So we have half of the product, and we just multiply it by itself. Now we have the full product. Uh, the only thing we may have missed is, if exponent was odd, when we divided by 2, we lost the uh, we lost that. We lost the extra 1, because it's a floor. So we'll just multiply by the extra 1 if we have to. And we have to if it's odd, right? So if pod mod 2 is 1 we'll just do save times equals base. And then we just return save. And this is how we take the power in logarithmic time. And it's logarithmic because exponent halves every time. There's only one cow to another power function and the exponent halves every time. So it's log of the initial exponent.